All right, so at this point, it was just sort of a proof of concept in that there's a button and we want it to start to uh, obey us. So by having that, um, that alert that shows us that this part works, we are able to sort of reference or target an, an HTML element via JavaScript. The event of clicking on it worked because it then triggered a function call. And we defined our function call, which what we're going to do is pop up a message that says, hello. So because we're writing this in plain old JavaScript, it's rather wordy, it's rather verbose. So when we get to jQuery, we will be able to write all of that basically with a dollar symbol, sort of. But in the long way at the moment, because it's basic JavaScript. What I want to do is, um, well, I won't delete it. Let's comment it out. Remember, you can comment out code to deactivate it. We know it works. We don't want that alert to pop up anymore. You could delete it or comment it. What I really want it to do is to start to collect what the person typed in the box. So we have a way in JavaScript and in most programming languages to store content temporarily. That's a variable. A variable is a container to store just about anything. In other strongly typed languages, you have to define, this container can only hold numbers. This container can only hold text. You have to type the type. You have to add the type that the variable can hold. JavaScript is not strongly typed. Uh, you can have a variable, a container, hold anything. It can change to hold anything that's necessary for you. That's good and bad. It's bad if you're used to the other languages. You say, well, why don't they do it the right way like they learned in the other language? This is the right way in JavaScript. It's also good for us because we don't have to remember what did I, uh, how did I type that variable, what, what should it hold? It doesn't matter. It'll hold what it needs to hold. If that doesn't make sense at the moment, that's okay. It'll make more sense as we go on. But we're going to type var to create a variable, an object that varies, that changes. I'm going to call it space TMP name, the temporary name, the name that the person typed at that moment. They can type multiple names. So I want to check what's in the box at the moment, and then do something with it. Equals space document dot get element by ID quotes. We're seeing this again. We had it before to activate a after a click to do something. Now we're doing it to reference what's the text inside of the input box and storing that in the variable. Well, this time we're dealing with in name. The object in question is the input box with a unique ID of in name. Make sure you spell it the same as you spelled it up online whatever, where you typed it over there, in name, and then at the end, dot value, semicolon. The value property. So a property of an object in another object, storing that in a variable. The onClick property of that button object in the document object. We then call a function. So we see we see equals used for something like this, and we more commonly see it here. This is assignment. Give me the value, store it temporarily in temp name. Next line, console.log temp name. Save it and run it. Type something in the box, click Save, and then look in your console to see what you typed. This will not display on screen, it will be in the console. We could have made it appear on screen somehow. 
but for right now we're say, displaying it in the console in the F12 screen. Let's see if this works. So save it, run it, type something in the box, and then click Save. And then look inside of your console. So it should work something like this. I'm going to open my console right away. I'm going to type a name here. I'm going to click Save. And it goes to the console. In Firefox, it's telling me on line 30, column 6, this code executed. If I type something else, well, John Adams is still there. I need to clear it, maybe. Type something else. Save. Get the next result. Line 30, column 6. The name, the name was up there. I have to clear it to type another one. Well, I want it to also clear after saving. This is the purpose of a function, a collection of steps. I want it to take the name and store it in the variable. I want it to clear the box and then I want it to do other things. So that's what a function is for, a series of steps to do over and over. So I, you should see that it did took, take the value, it started in the variable, and then displayed the variable in the console. I want to clear the input field. This is the thing where the reset button would clear it, but the reset button would clear everything. And this is how we can target to clear only individual boxes. We have to reference the box, which is document.getElementById. The box is in name. And we say value, dot value, equals, quote, and quote. That lets us clear the value, that, that lets us clear what's in the box. We set it to nothing, to null, to null, basically, to nothing. So retrieving the name, displaying the name in the console, clearing the box, this series of steps all in this function that runs after the button is clicked. This is the essence of, of JavaScript in many programming languages. Some trigger, some function, results. Yes? Can you put a piece of a bubble zero? Yes, it would put the number zero into the box. Zero is zero, it's not nothing, it's something. Uh, I think if we put null, that might empty it out, but it's common practice to put nothing. Into it, put nothing, null, so it clears it out. Let's see if this worked. If I run it, open my console, type a name, save it, display the name, and it cleared the box. Back to the placeholder. So if I just save names, there it goes. Displaying it clearing the box, back to the placeholder. I want to store as many names as the person wants to give me. A variable, by default, only stores one name at a time. You saw that I typed Victor and it showed Victor. Then I type Ahmed and it only showed Ahmed. So a variable only holds one thing at a time. It gets emptied out and then it stores something else. I instead want to create a variable where I can sto store multiple values at once. That's known as an array. So we can make a note I'm going to make a note right above this var. 
this var only holds one item at a time. A note down here, we emptied or cleared the input box by setting value to nothing. The console displayed in the console the contents of the temp name variable. The variable is a container, just like these containers here hold a variety of beverages, water, apple juice, maybe vodka in one of them, but they hold different liquids. They're just containers. They hold different things. If you wanted to put something else, you'd spill that out and fill it with something else. That's what a variable is in many programming languages. Well, what if I have, um, you know, uh, one of those handles that holds, you know, like a six pack of beers? So I can have different beers in that in that holder. That's an array. I can hold different kinds of beverages in that. So we'll create a new kind of variable that lets us hold uh, more than one variable at a time. I want to input lots of names and save them and retrieve them. This type, kind of variable here only works with one. We also need to deal with scope. This variable that we've created is created at the moment that we click the button. And when we're done running the function, it then gets removed from memory. So the default is the name Victor was displayed, and then when the function ends, the variable disappears, basically. This built-in memory management. Variables inside of a function only exist while the function is running. When we get to the end of the function, the, uh, the variables go away. I want to uh, store the variable longer, multiple uh, items in the variable, and I also want to be able to use the variable in other places. In my, uh, in my project. Any variables that I created in the function will only exist in this function. This is a little complex to talk about now, but um, we're going to create a variable that is global. This is a local scope variable. We need to create a global variable, meaning a variable outside of the function. So let's back up back up outside of the function and we'll create a variable over here. We're creating a variable that is global that can be used in multiple parts of the program. This variable really only exists and can be used in the world of the function. We will call this one all names. We saw here, we created a variable, gave it a name, filled it with something, assigned a value, so we created it and filled it with something. Same thing up here. I'm going to create it, fill it with something, equals. I don't know what yet. I, I don't know what names people are going to type. So it'll be an empty array, an empty collection of variables. Square bracket opening square bracket, closing square bracket, semicolon, comment, global scope variable, global scope array variable, it holds many values at once, can be used all through the program. So that means down here. This variable only holds one item at a time. Local scope variable only can only be used inside 
this function. It doesn't quite matter for us at the moment with such a simple program, but it definitely will matter later. Here's one uh, reason we could have you know, a video game, and we have a function. Whenever you click the fire button and it shoots a laser, the little ship shoots a laser, well, clicking that button needs a variety of things to happen. The laser animation to happen, the sound of the laser to happen, error uh, or hit detection to see if you hit the target. If you did hit the target, save your, save your points. If you didn't hit the target, do something else. So we might have variables that only exist in a function for certain actions, and then variables that exist outside of functions to be used everywhere, like a high score counter or a current score counter. The good thing is, at least in this function, we can access that variable outside. But if we wrote code outside of that function, if we wrote up here, or even after it, if we wrote outside of the function console log temp name, we would get an error. Because temp name can only be accessed with code in this function. You don't have to do this, but let me show you. Outside of the function, console.log temp name. If I try to save anything, I'm getting an error over here. Temp name is not defined. It's the code inside of the function. This one did work because line 28 or line 36 is inside of the function. Line 40 is outside of the function, and it cannot find this variable. So we temporarily have the current name that the person typed. We displayed it in the console. Let's start to store it in that array, that collection of variables. The way we do that is all names dot push. We have variables also internally are objects. So JavaScript is an object-oriented language. Everything's an object. The console object, the document object, we created an object right there, all names. It's, a, it's an array. It holds a multiple amounts of elements. It's an object. This plain old variable, that's an object, too. Here we're saying, okay, all names object dot push. There's the push method, the push command. Let's put, let's push into that array the name that is currently input, which is temp name. Because right here, we're storing it temporarily. Whatever the person typed in the box, store it temporarily here. Then put it into the array. And then after that, well, before that comment, add the current name into the array. to the array, add to the array. To see that, console.log all names. The line over here is going to display the current name that they typed. The line over here is going to display every name that they typed. Save it and run it. Type a name, save it, check your console. Type another name, save it, check your console. Type a bunch of names. You will see that it'll display your current name and all the names you've typed.
go does this thing just grow and shrink as you have more variables within that world? Yes, it'll keep growing and growing every time you push into it. And we have various methods, different various commands to cut things out of it. Uh, so yeah, it's it can it can change at any point. Let's let me check mine. So I'll run it. I'll bring up the console first. So again, I'll type John. Save. My first line is the current temporary name. The next line is saying, here's your array with one name inside of it. Saving another one. The current name, the name of what you've put into the array in order. The next one, what am I saving here? So this is the current name, and then here's the array in that order of names that I've saved. Let's pause here. Um, anyone need a little help here? A couple things could go wrong. Check your spelling. So the big idea is that into this array, we're pushing individual elements, and then we're displaying them on screen. All of this is inside of the function name save. There's actually really only one, two, three, four, five real commands and a bunch of comments. And that's pretty common. <coughs> Well, all of this is being saved internally in the memory. Um, I want it to be displayed on screen. It's going to the console, but the console is for developers. It's for us to troubleshoot it and debug it. We want it to display on screen. We have uh, a div placeholder. We'll do it the quick way, then we'll do it the right way. I want to display what's in my array on screen. We've got a placeholder, a div, with an ID. So let's say after after we clean out or empty the input box, we'll say document.getElementById in quotes div show. That's the that's the temporary placeholder. We're referencing now that object on screen. And this time we're doing dot inner HTML. We're going to write some HTML inside of that div. Right now it's empty. equals all names. We saw console.log was pretty straightforward. There's our object, do something, log. Here's our object now, much longer, we have to be more specific. Dot inner HTML, property, set it to the array, set it to what's inside of that variable. Every time you save and, and run it, it will clear out all of the variables. It will be empty, so uh, every time you reset it or refresh it, it, it still clears it out. So add some names again. Let me refresh it. So let's save the name. In the console, it's behaving as it should have a moment ago. Now on screen, it's showing something. showing in the console and on screen. Up to 
console is doing something and on screen it's doing something. Whatever's inside of that array, show it on screen. That was just a quick way. We'll do it the right way in just a moment. Do you see what's going on here? There's this user input, the plain HTML, relatively easy to set up. It doesn't actually do anything. That form doesn't do anything until a button click. Then the JavaScript takes over. So it's very common to have like 20 lines of HTML and 200 lines of JavaScript because we need to specify the objects, create variables, manipulate them, display them on screen. That's what takes the most <coughs> the most typing, and that's where the most errors could happen. HTML, again, the easiest one of all of the languages is HTML, then CSS, then JavaScript. That book that I've got in the syllabus, again, the HTML and the CSS is in one book, 500 pages. The JavaScript is one book, 600 pages. It's much more complex. Let's pause here. Is anyone uh, having any trouble with any of this?
So at this point, we've got uh, some input. It's being processed in that the temp name is being saved in the array, and then the array is being displayed in the console and on screen. We're going to need to do something like that, but a little smarter, because what if I want to display the names that have already been saved? Right now, I will only display the names in the div at the moment that you save them. I want to display the names that have already been saved. So this works, but I don't, it doesn't quite work how I want it to. I want it to display these names after I've typed names, 
or retrieve the names after I've typed some names. So let's comment out that line. We're going to use it later, but we'll comment it out. And in my example, to remind you the example project from the beginning of the day, we've got the oops, we've got the we've got the input box, go cancel, clear, whatever. And then you, you start to save items in here. Save and save and save. And then after the fact, I want to do something with them. I want to either display them all get one random or get them all back randomly. So let's start to work on this stuff. We need more buttons. We need more input buttons. That's plain HTML. We'll go back to the HTML area, add some more buttons, give them IDs, so that then via the JavaScript they can do something else. Let's back up to the form. We've got we've got online. Let's see, we've got the field set. Right before the end of field set, HR horizontal rule. This will make a basic line separating these inputs from the ones that follow. input type button value show all so I'm making a new button the person can then when they choose put to show all names this needs an ID ID of BTN show all. So now we have a different trigger to have different things happen. We've got a show all button. We then need to write some JavaScript to make that button active, to make it pay attention, so to speak, and then a series of steps to do something after the button is clicked. So an HTML object, JavaScript sees everything here as objects, so an HTML object which then needs uh, a trigger and then a series of steps. We're going to write then something very similar. We had the on click uh, upon that save object to do something, and then the something is a function. So we'll do something similar to that. After the end of our function name, name save, a couple of enters there to separate them. Document dot get element by ID. I'm still inside of that whole iffy, the immediately invoked function, the very, very first function in the script. Open close parentheses, dot on click. So on the object, btn, I forgot what I called it already, btn show all. btn show all. On the B BTN show all button, after we get a click, equals the name of a function that we'll invent, fn show all, Oops. equals fn show all. We need to define what function show all is. So next line, function keyword, fn show all. 
open close parentheses curly braces, which I'll break into multiple lines. So here we're defining what does the, the brand new command function show all mean? It means this function show all. And notice the syntax, open and close parentheses there. Um, in JavaScript, the way we're writing it here, the way it is, we, we don't put the parentheses here. In other instances, we will. Don't worry about it just yet. But up here, we're basically saying call a function. We're defining the function here with this syntax. Don't forget that closing curly brace. You open it and close it, and then I put it into its own line, because I'm going to have multiple lines. And therefore, before I forget, and fn show all. So just any comment for yourself, because as we get more complex with lots of lines of code, where does that guy be belong to? Oh, I see. It's the end of my show all. In this function, just copy and paste. Copy and paste this that we saw it worked before, but it wasn't happening when we wanted it. We want this to happen after a button click. All of this sets up a button click to do something. Just copy and paste it. If it worked before, just copy and paste it. Into your div show, in your inner HTML property, we're going to write HTML into div show all the names in the array after we click the button. I will save it and run it. I'll put in a few names. I'm just going to put some gibberish. Don't worry about putting real names. Something save, something save, something save, and then I've got a new button waiting. Show all. In the div, it displays what I wrote in the array. Add another something else, save, another, save, show all. So it doesn't show what's in the array until I click the button. But it is being set, stored in memory, and then I display it, show all. This is the part where, obviously, if we're following along in how I'm typing, I'm typing it and how I'm guiding it, guiding us, it's working a certain way. But then, this is the part about we we need to then think about troubleshooting it along the way and possible errors. Right now, we're expecting, for example, a name, you know, a real human name. But what if I was typing 12345? Is a person called 12345? It will let me save that. It will let me type numbers, and then it'll show that. It'll let me type symbols. That's probably not a real name. It looks like Yosemite Sam cursing at me. If I save that, it'll accept that. If I put in a bunch of empty spaces, it'll save that. empty space. Right now there's no special error checking or anything. It'll accept any input, even though I said type equals text. So the error checking part, valid input, that often is pretty complex to set up. We're not going to worry about it too much on this one. It's a little too much effort for the moment. What I do want to worry about, though, is if I, if I have a person come to my app at this point and right away click Show All, it is showing nothing. I would like it to pop up and say, wait a minute, type something first before trying to show something. So we'll have that kind of error checking at least. Don't try to show anything if there's nothing, if there's no name saved. Let's check, are there names first before trying to show names? If there are names, display the names. If there are no names, display a feedback, some error message or something. 
So that's why we have a function. I don't simply want it to display the names. I want to check, are there names to display, yes or no? Yes, display the names. No, give an error. Before actually trying to display the name, this gives us some space, before trying to display the names, we need to check, are there names saved in the array? An array is an object and it stores multiple variables, we can check how many variables are in the array. We'll create a local scope, a temporary variable, to check how many names are there in the array. We'll call it um, uh, all names len. I will make it obvious at the moment. All name size. How many names, what's the size of the all names array? Equal all names dot length, semicolon. We've got the all names object, and it has the property length. That's the built-in reserved JavaScript command that will check how many items are there in an array. We've got an array called all names. When I save seven names, the length of that array is seven. When I save two names, the length of that is two. I'm going to take that length and save it in all names size. Console.log all names size. You save it and run it. Don't type any names and you click show names. It should say zero or null or something. There's nothing in the array. As you add names and then show names, it'll show you the names plus in the console a one to tell you there's one name or a seven to tell you there's seven names or a 99 to tell you there's 99 names in it. check the number of names in the array, store that temporarily, display that, and then do the rest, which it's not done yet, but I'm building up to it conceptually. Pull up my console. If I do show all now, zero. There are no names in the array. I put in one name. Save, show, there's one name in the array, and it shows it on screen. Put in another name, save it, show it. There are two names in the array, two names. If I type special characters, it'll take that, but again, we're not going to deal with error checking special characters. It'll take it. So there's the name, that root name, and there's three of them. Even empty spaces. If I put an empty space here and save that, it'll take it. There's a fourth item in the array right there, empty spaces. Empty space. What's that? Um, in because we have inner HTML, the empty space will be rendered as one space. But internally in JavaScript it is saving it as like three spaces. But it only shows, it is showing here because it's got a comma. If I were then to add another name, save and show, there's that empty space and the next name. But in the array, in the JavaScript, it did save five spaces. It's just that HTML ignores them and just shows one space. All through this class, we've only been using double quotes, and uh, we could use single quotes at any time, but we want them consistently. What line? Uh, line four. Fifty. Yeah. 
we don't put quotes in that case. We, we had quotes when we said hello because we wanted it to display literally hello. I want to display what's in the variable all names, so I don't put quotes. Show me what's in the variable, no quotes. Display exactly all name sizes, quotes. This is building up. This is getting us to do something else. Because if I'm talking to someone in the real world, we, we kind of understand each other, and I would say, are you hungry? Yes, let's go get something to eat. You know, that all makes sense. To the computer, it doesn't. The computer doesn't think that way. The computer basically thinks yes or no, on or off, true or false, zero or one. It thinks in a binary way, in two ways, yes or no, true or false. Every computer, the most advanced computers, the most basic way it thinks is true or false, yes or no, zero or one. So we're trying to set up here something complex. Are there names in the array? If there are, display it. If there isn't, give an error. We can check that here. What happens when there are no names in the array? What's the result of, of this variable? Zero. So zero, there's no names. What's the opposite of zero? Any other number besides zero. So we're about to check. If there's zero items in the array, there's nothing in the array, give an error. If there's anything else besides zero, there must be something, at least one name. Display that. So before we actually display something, we need to check. We need to ask if open close parentheses, open close curly brace. This is one of the different ways that we can can ask a question or check something. This is a conditional statement on the condition of something. Conditional statement to check true or false of something. It will only check true or false. Again, on, off, true, false, Yes, no. Anything in just about any programming language. You know, all behind the scenes of everything that happens on Facebook or Google or any or Instagram or anything, all behind the scenes, it's yes or no. It obviously looks more complex to us because there's the layers ahead of it. But behind the scenes, if someone clicks your picture on Facebook to like, Behind the scenes, it said something like, if like equals true, show a heart. If like equals false, don't show anything. Here we're saying, if all names size exclamation point equals Space zero. This is saying not. Uh, if all name size is not zero, the opposite of zero is one, or one million, or seven, any number besides zero. When we have a zero in this, it means the array is empty. Anything else means it's not empty, no matter if it has gibberish. We're not testing for that. We're just testing if it's empty or not. If it's uh, not empty, let's break those curly braces into a separate line. If it's not empty, this is then when we will actually display the contents of the array. So move that div show into this part. If it's not empty, show those names. At the end of this curly brace, else, another open curly brace and close curly brace pair. 
because it can only check true or false, yes or no. So we have either it is zero, not zero, or it is zero. That's the else part. We're either going to trip this part, we're either going to trigger this part, it's not zero. So show the names. The other possibility is it is zero. So there's the else. In that case, to the user, alert, please enter at least one name first. If the array is empty, pop up, please enter something first. If it's not empty, show those names. This is a conditional statement. If not empty, if array not empty, show names in the array. Or else it was empty. Display an error pop up. Conditional statement to check true or false of something. If you save it and run it and click show names with nothing saved, it should pop up and say save at least one name. As you add names, it should then show the names because every time you click show names, it'll do this same loop. When you click show names, it'll run this and check. And at one point it could be empty and at one point it could not be empty. So we've got the if and the else. We're checking two possibilities. And yes, with other code, there are ways to check five possibilities, 99 possibilities. This is one very quick way to check two, two possibilities. Either it's empty or there's something in it. I'm going to check here. Okay, ladies over there, remember if you need a little bit of help, Mickey, Mickey, remember if you need a little bit of help, call me over, please. So, um, if I click here, show all with nothing in it, pop up. The array is empty. Every time you refresh it, it will clear the array. Now as I start to save names, save it and show it, it's not empty, so it will show. Save it show it. If I refresh, there's no names in the array, show, I went to the else part. There it is. So let's take our second break here. Let's confirm all of this works. Uh, it's 8.10, we'll be back at 8.20. Uh,